Hey everybody, Mike Iconelli back out here in the shop and I've got a really, really good one for you today. Um, in this shop, we're going to talk a little more about theory. We're going to get a little more mental on this one and we're going to analyze the top five biggest mistakes in bass fishing. The top five biggest mistakes in bass fishing. Um, you know, in a lot of these shops, we're talking about the good stuff, how to rig the bait, how to move it, how to work it, where to throw, right? We're talking about the good stuff. Today, I want to go over the bad stuff because you can learn from mistakes just like you can from success, right? From positive stuff. So we're going to go ahead and dive into the top five things you're, you can do wrong in bass fishing that really can mess you up. Here's the other thing I want to let you know before I get into these. All five of these things are mistakes that I have made and sometimes still make, right? These aren't things that I'm judging other people for or I'm looking back at my co-angler. These are mistakes that I've made and still make. And it's good to talk about them because it reminds you, it helps you remember not to do these things wrong. Here they go, in no particular order. And the number one mistake that you can make in bass fishing is not listening to the fish. Not listening to the fish. All right, I know what you're thinking right now. You're saying, yo, bro, fish don't talk. Fish don't speak. But I disagree, and they do, right? And, you know, my rule in fishing is that every bite you get, every fish you catch, there is a reason you got that bite. There's a reason you caught that fish. And when you get that bite and you set the hook and you reel that fish in and you land it and you hold it, it's very easy to get excited, right? Of all people, I can tell you, I get excited. I'm, ex I'm stoked. And it's very easy to catch a fish, take a picture and release them, and just go back to fishing and not think about what that fish was saying to you, right? So a big mistake is not listening to the fish. If you think about it in terms that every bite and every fish you catch, there's a reason for it, and it's a piece to a bigger puzzle, you're going to become a better fisherman, right? You're going to become very analytic. You're going to analyze that fish, that bite, and you're going to say, why did I catch that fish, right? You want to answer the questions for every bite you get Every fish you land, you want to answer these questions. Why did I catch that fish, right? Why was he where he was at? If I caught him off of a dock, where was he positioned on the dock? Shady side, sunny side, was he on the deep end? Was he on the shallow end? Was he underneath? Was he on a swim ladder? What was the water clarity? Was it dirty water? Was it stained? Was it clear? What's the wind doing, right? When I caught that fish, the wind was blowing into the bank. It was calm, right? Like all those questions you want to answer. And before you let that fish go, you want to use that information to help you get the next bite, okay? So the first mistake, and I still make it, I, 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 it's easy to talk about, but I still make the mistake is put a reason to that fish or that bite. And when you start listening to the fish, you become a better fisherman. You, you put a reason to the whole thing and you can figure the puzzle out a lot easier. So number one mistake fishermen make, not listening to the fish. Number two, and boy, have I committed this mistake a lot in my lifetime and in my career uh, fishing. And the number two biggest mistake in bass fishing is fishing 
yesterday's fish, fishing history and doc talk instead of fishing the moment. Fishing that second in time, you know, that cast, right? We get caught up in fishing what happened yesterday or last week or last year very easily. And the, the simple answer why that happens, it's human nature. Human nature is we, we operate by um, positive impacts, right? We, we operate by positive exposures. So when you caught a bass off of that stump on a flat a week ago, it triggers a memory instinct, a positive impulse in your brain. And by default, we want to go back to that same stump a week later with the same lure and make the same cast and expect the same results. That's human nature. You can say the same thing for doc talk. Uh, you get to the marina and everybody's talking about a black and blue chatterbait on windblown points. But by the time you get out there, the conditions have changed. The wind's different, it's a different time of day. They pulled a little bit of water. That bite's gone away already. But because everybody talked about it, doc talk, you know, human nature is you wanna go chase that bite. One more example. What about waypoints? What about waypoints? We all have them. If you have a depth finder with a GPS, you've probably saved a waypoint in your life. And it's very easy to return to a place. I'm going back to Lake Gunnersville this year. I was there last time, the same time of the year. I was there a year ago. You fire up your GPS, you look on the map at Lake Gunnersville. Look at all those dots. It's an endless amount of dots. And human nature is, man, we killed them at Gunnersville last time this year, same time of the year, same weather, everything's the same. Let's go chase our dots. But that hate happened a year ago, right? <laughs> and it's different. And um, in many cases, I'm an advocate of erasing all your waypoints. Not in every condition, but in a lot of conditions, start fresh. Purposely erase your waypoints. So you start on a clean slate. So, you know, what I'm trying to tell you here is don't fish yesterday's fish. Fish for right now. When you launch your boat or your kayak or your John boat or your waiting, fish for that cast in that moment of time and go back to number one. Listen to the fish. When you do that, you're fishing current. You're fishing the moment. You're not, you're not fishing yesterday's fish. And that is the biggest number two mistake I see in bass fishing. It's fishing history. Let's go on to number three. And oh boy, have I committed this mistake so many times in my life and so many times in my career. And the biggest mistake in bass fishing, number three, is being stubborn. Can you hear that on the mic? Being hard-headed, being stubborn, being hard-headed, committing to one bait or one technique because it's your favorite thing to do or because you caught them on it yesterday. Being stubborn in bass fishing, it's like oil and water. It does not go together. And um, it's real easy to get comfortable with a technique or a bait or a pattern. Um, you know, I'm just looking here, I had this laying on the shop desk, but a vibrating jig with a trailer on the back. I love this thing, I love it. I love it almost to the point where it hurts me because I get too stubborn. Ripping this thing through grass, winding it around to cover water, power fishing. I love power fishing. But there are times you have to put your favorite lure, 
your favorite bait, your favorite technique down. And you know, the thing about it is it's simple. It seems so simple when I'm talking about it, but it's not, I, I know it's not. But it is simple to know when to put something down. And you know when that is? When the fish aren't biting. When you're not getting bit, you need to put something down. A real good example would be if you're fishing multiple days in a row, uh, whether you're fun fishing or tournament fishing, a lot of times you'll find a, what I call group of fish, right? You get into an area of the lake and there's a group of fish that live there. And the day before, you caught them extremely well cranking in that area for that group of fish. You go home that night, you go to sleep, you put your stuff away, you wake up the next day, you come back, happens a lot in tournaments, you go straight to that area and you start winding that crankbait around. And you know, human nature is to be stubborn and hard-headed, but if I'm winding around and I look at my watch and time's flying past and I'm not getting bit, you have to be willing to change. Um, you know, th that change sometimes could be a bait, put the crankbait down, drag a worm. That change could be moving a little shallower or a little deeper in that area. Or sometimes that change means abandoning that area and that bait and starting over, right? But being hard-headed, being stubborn, having a favorite thing and that's all you wanna do, that's a bad thing in fishing. I'm not telling you you've gotta be Gerald Swindle and fish 30 different baits in the course of a day, but you have to be willing to change. You have to be willing to go from power fishing to finesse fishing, change color, change size. You have to keep an open mind and you can't get stubborn. When you get stubborn and get hard-headed and you go hours without getting bit, it's no good, it leads you down a, a dark path. Um, before we get on to the next one, let me give you a little rule of thumb, which is, and this, let, let me tell you that this isn't a hard, fast rule for being stubborn and hard-headed. It's a general guideline. And it's an hour rule, a one hour rule, which means if you get into an area of the lake, a group of fish, an area that you believe the fish live, you caught them yesterday, you caught them last week, whatever, and you start fishing with your favorite lure for an hour and you haven't got a bite, you need to make a change, right? So the hour rule, when you start to learn it, it makes you watch your clock. It makes you look at your clock and say, I got here at 7 a.m., it's 8 a.m. and I haven't caught one yet, winding. Maybe I should slow down. Maybe I should wind a different color. Maybe I should wind shallower. Maybe I should go deeper and finesse, right? So an hour rule is a great way to keep yourself in check when you're stubborn. Biggest bass fishing mistake number three, being hard-headed and stubborn. All right, let's keep going. Number four, and of all five of these things I'm gonna talk about, I am the most guilty of this one, number four. I have committed this sin more than any of the other ones. This is my biggest mistake. Please help me. And by me talking about it, it's gonna help me this year. Um, the biggest mistake, number four in bass fishing, is not slowing down. Not slowing down and fishing thorough. Um, Man, when I look back on my career, I think because of the nature of who I am and my personality, I'm very, uh, I've, I've got high energy, maybe borderline high anxiety, and I, I, I've got a little bit of ADD, and I like to move and cast and move and keep on the trolling motor, and, and it's, it's sort of who I am but it has hurt me so many times, fun fishing, tournament fishing, that I blow through an area. I fish an area way too fast and I either miss the fish completely 
or I catch a few, and I'm just chipping away at the potential of what's in that area, right? I catch a two pounder and a pound and a halfer, and I make a couple more casts and I don't get bit, and I'm, boom, I'm gone. You have to, in times, at, at certain times, you have to slow down and be more thorough. Um, I can tell you one of the biggest things in my personal fishing that made me realize this is kayak fishing. When I started kayak fishing about six, seven, eight years ago, and within the last three years, when I started tournament kayak fishing, it forced me to slow down because I couldn't move with the trolling motor on high. I couldn't fire an outboard up and go run five or 10 miles down lake, right? It forced me to learn to slow down and fish an area more thoroughly. For sure, let me tell you this, that when the bite is not optimal is when you have to slow down. When the fish are biting and the pressure's falling and, and it's an active bite, you don't have to slow down as much, but you have to, there are times where you have to slow down. A great example I'll give you is um, a cold front in Florida, right? If you're fishing down in Florida before a cold front, it's easy. The fish are snapping, you can move. And even when you're in an area of the lake that has a ton of bass, when a cold front comes through or heavy fishing pressure comes in, the bite tightens up, man. It tightens up. And when you learn to take your time to slow down, to make multiple casts to one piece of cover, right? To really get thorough and just be thorough with your presentations and your casting and your retrieve. You, you tone everything down and slow it down. You absolutely get more bites when things toughen up, right? Pressure, weather, Florida, when, those, when that cold front affects those Florida strain bass. Being thorough, uh, you know, slowing down, it helps you. And the other benefit of slowing down is you learn that area that you're fishing a lot better. When you're fishing fast, a lot of times you just see the big obvious stuff, right? You got your sunglasses on, you're fishing. Oh yeah, I can see that one group of lily pads. You fish that group of lily pads and then you go on. But when you slow down, you might find another isolated pad or some that are just stalks. Right? And, you're, and you're really analyzing better. Even with your electronics, right? You've got your eye on your forward-facing sonar, on your 2D down imaging, and all of a sudden you notice something. Wait a minute, there's a little ditch right here. It drops a foot. Man, if I'm going fast through that area, I've blown past winning areas in my career so many times because I didn't pick up on those little details, okay? Slowing down, being more thorough, um, taking your time, picking stuff apart. If you don't do that, you're making a big mistake. And that's the biggest, number four biggest mistake in all bass fishing. It's not slowing down. All right, last but not least, and I kind of did save this one for last because this one is the most simple mistake. It's the one you should learn when you're like five years old. Somebody should slap you in your face, right, not when you're five. But somebody should slap you in the face for making this mistake. And you would think after all these years that I wouldn't make this mistake anymore. And I still do. And number five on the list of bass fishing's biggest mistakes is not checking your line. Not checking your line. Oh my God, I, I got a rod right here. I'm putting my hand for this last one. Line is a, is a funny thing. Um, 
but especially all line. I don't care if you're using braid, fluorocarbon, or mono. All line is susceptible to damage, fray, uh, rough areas, injury, and not checking your line, especially after time has passed or fish have been caught is the number five biggest mistake in bass fishing. Um, I can tell you guys, I use fluorocarbon a lot. And as great as fluorocarbon is, so many amazing benefits of fluorocarbon. Fluorocarbon can get damaged. And even the smallest little nick or, or rough spot can cause that line to degrade to lower strength. Right? So, you know, right here I've got 12 pound fluorocarbon on this crankbait. And if I crank for two hours and I'm cranking around wood and rock and I'm not checking my line, you can feel that places the fluorocarbon have impacted will have places that degrade the line. It gets, it gets rough or it has a, a nick in it or a rough spot. And it'll take 12 down to 10 or eight or six. So now you're fishing with 12 pound tests and you're doing things assuming it's 12 pound tests when it's 10 or eight or six or less. And on spinning, it's even worse. So line checking is a big mistake or not line checking is a big mistake. Here's basically what I do. The first couple feet of the line is your highest impact point. So after, you know, a good rule of thumb is after 20 or 30 minutes, even if you haven't caught a fish, grab your plug, grab your lure, and just go like this. Look at this, guys. Just feel up that line from the line tie up about two or three feet. Feel for anything different. If you feel a rough spot or a fray or a nick, power pole down, take the time out, retie. The other thing I do is I feel there. If I don't feel anything, I look at the knot. I'll hold that knot up to the light. I'll pull on it. A lot of times I'll do a pull check. Feel the knot, everything feels good. I get back to fishing. If I look and I see something at that knot that I don't like, or if I feel something there, or I do a knot check and it breaks, I got to retie, okay? The other thing I do a lot is after a fish catch, every fish from a pound to 10 pounds, after you catch that fish, put them in the live well, let them go, take a picture, whatever you do, do that same thing. I look at my line. I check up a little bit, a couple feet up the line. And just the act of catching a fish can cause line damage. A largemouth, smallmouth, spotted bass, a pickerel, a pike, uh, a mudfish, a gar, can all cause injury to that line. And if you don't check, you have a really good chance. If there's a rough spot, especially near that knot, on your very next fish catch of losing that fish. Man, I've been heartbroken so many times because I got in a rush, I didn't check, I, I got in a hurry, I wasn't doing my due diligence of checking that line. You have to do it. One other thing I wanna mention about line check is um, I still check braid, same way, check my braid at line. I still check mono, same way, after a fish catch 20, 30 casts, I'm still looking. But I want you to also check your leader to super line knot throughout the day as well. And that's the knot that's going to go from your braid to your leader, whether it's fluoro or mono. I want you to do the same thing. I want you to feel that connection knot. I don't care what you're tying. Uh, in, uh, uh, a nail knot, a uh, uh, FG knot, whatever knot you're tying, braid to, to, to leader, feel the knot, Look at it and do a stress test. Pull on it a little bit, right? 
make sure you know it's going to hold up. And I want you to do that periodically throughout the day after a fish catch. Same thing. I'm guilty of not checking that and having some big losses uh, throughout the day because I got lazy and I did not line check. All right. Biggest mistake in bass fishing number five. Simple one. Not checking your line. Um, man, I hope you enjoyed this in the shop. This one was more theory based, but we really did go over the top five biggest mistakes you can make in bass fishing. I've made all these mistakes. I still make them. Hopefully by talking about them, I'm not going to make them as much this coming season. But I hope you enjoyed this in the shop. Man, if you like the stuff you're hearing here, stop right now. Hit that subscribe button. See it down there? Hit that subscribe button. When you do that, when you subscribe, you're going to get alerts. You're going to get notifications every time a new video comes out. And we've got them coming out weekly. If you're already subscribed, tell your fishing friends about Mike Iaconelli Fishing on YouTube. We're here to try to help you out, help you become a better angler. Uh, good luck, good fishing. Remember those five things? You're going to become a better angler. Bye.